right. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, everyone, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, welcome to yet another exciting uh, Citrix Ready Technical Webinar, uh, where we showcase how Citrix uh, and our partners like uh, Two Steps and Splunk, uh, who are here with us today, have uh, integrated uh, with Citrix's products uh, to deliver valuable products and uh, solutions to common problems uh, faced by our customers. Um, today we'll see uh, something uh, uh, something very new, something uh, uh, beyond uh, the traditional techniques to monitor Citrix, and and something which I'm sure uh, uh, everyone who's responsible to uh, manage and monitor. Uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops would be would be really uh, interested to hear and uh, try out uh, once we are done with this webinar. Uh, so our speakers from uh, Two Steps and Splunk will tell us all about uh, this new uh, uh, or, or new technique of uh, agentless Citrix monitoring uh, for Citrix virtual apps and uh, desktops, and uh, how you could use the uh, data to feed. Uh, feed into uh, Splunk uh, to to view performance data. Um, but at, at the end of the day, uh, this all helps to pro uh, proactively identify uh, any performance uh, issues related to uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops, uh, which which will really help uh, reduce uh, downtimes uh, on your most uh, critical applications hosted on Citrix. Uh, so I'm Anil Kumar, uh, your host uh, moderator for today. Uh, I'm a technical marketing manager at Citrix, uh, uh, working uh, in this role for about uh, five years now, um, and and uh, have uh, have had the privilege to work with uh, many technology partners like Two Splunk, Two Steps, and Splunk, uh, who are here with us today. Um, I have over a little over 11 years of experience in the industry and uh, my key focus at Citrix is to work with uh, a lot of security and uh, networking uh, technology partners to validate their uh, products and, uh, and, and uh, ongoing go-to-market uh, activities related to Citrix Ready. And uh, along with me, we have uh, a good set of speakers uh, with us today uh, from Two Steps and Splunk. Uh, so let's go around the table uh, for a quick round of uh, introductions. Uh, Simon, do you wanna go first? Yeah, thanks Anil. So um, welcome everybody to the webinar and thank you for joining. My name's Simon Trosbar. I'm the Managing Director of Two Steps. Uh, I've been with the business almost three years now and essentially responsible for the product strategy and go to market to um, to bring two steps. Um, and uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure working with our partners Splunk and Citrix. Looking forward to uh, sharing what the product does with the audience today. Uh, Andy. Oh yeah. Hi everyone. So my name is Andy Beersley. I'm a Splunker and uh, I work with our user community who are using Splunk for uh, things that aren't related to security. So anything to do with IT operations or application delivery um, or any number of things really. So I help, we help customers to get some really good insights out of their machine data using Splunk. And over to you, Andrew. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Newlands and I'm head of product of Two Steps. Uh, my background is engineering and I've done a number of things in that sphere, but for the last year or so I've had the pleasure of building out the two-step product which we're going to show you today and I'm very excited to do so. All right, Th thanks uh, thanks, and welcome uh, Simon, Andrew and Andy to the webinar. I know it's very early for you guys over there, but uh, really uh, uh, very exciting. I, I know I've seen the slides before. Uh, uh, and we discussed uh, this earlier and had the privilege to uh, validate uh, and, and see your product demos. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, what's uh, what's coming up next. Uh, so uh, so let's go and and, uh, and let let's move on to the next slide. Right. Uh, so before we, uh, before I hand it over uh, to uh, Simon, to uh, Simon, Andy, and Andrew, I want to uh, kind of uh, introduce 
a little bit about Citrix Ready and what we do here. Uh, so Citrix Ready, uh, it's a technology partner program where we uh, uh, recommend solutions that are trusted uh, to enhance uh, Citrix environments for uh, digital workspace, networking, and uh, our cloud services. Uh, all the products which are featured uh, in our Citrix Ready marketplace uh, have completed uh, thorough verification testing, uh, thereby providing uh, that extra confidence uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and joint solution compatibility of which, which our customers look out for. Uh, and, and with this uh, online catalog and, and our uh, branding program, you could uh, easily find and build uh, a trusted infrastructure with, with all, uh, all, all or uh, most of the Citrix Ready products we have uh, online. So, um, and, uh, and with that said, and uh, without any further ado, uh, let me hand it over to uh, our speakers today to learn more about uh, how we can use agentless uh, synth synthetic monitoring uh, to proactively uh, monitor Citrix and use, uh, and, and use the feed uh, data into Splunk to uh, identify performance issues. Uh, so over to you, Simon, thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Anil. And again, thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Yeah, extremely early for us in um, in Melbourne, Australia. It's uh, three thirty in the morning, but we uh, we've, we've got a supply of coffee, so we're we're good to go. Um, today, we're going to be introducing you to an exciting new capability um, called Two Steps. Um, just on the name for a second, it's called Two Steps. It's a bit of a play on words. Um, it's really all about being two steps ahead of the of the problem. Um, and as IT operations professionals or service delivery professionals, um, our, our work is challenging and difficult. Um, and the, uh, the job today is to, uh, to demonstrate how Two Steps can provide some value um, in a uh, Citrix scenario, Citrix environment. Uh, we're going to talk about how we help monitor end user experience. And as Anil mentioned, push the performance metrics directly into Splunk. The challenge is really to, uh, to demonstrate how we can reduce cost, reduce risk and reduce effort. And by the end of the webinar, hopefully you're gonna be able to see how two steps enables you to be quicker uh, in regards to the implementation of, uh, of synthetic tests. Um, smarter by correlating end user experience metrics with infrastructure metrics that's produced um, and uh, pushed directly into Splunk. Safer, um, getting ahead of issues that uh, impact customer experience. And as we all know, customer experience is now a board level conversation. And then easier, showing you um, not only do we produce performance metrics, but we also produce video replays of issues. So easier for you to communicate um, what's going on with other stakeholders within your business. Okay, so a little bit about Two Steps. Uh, Two Steps is a relatively new product in the market, but in some ways it's been almost 15 years in the making. Um, it is part of a, uh, a business called Remesis, which has been um, in the space of synthetic monitoring for over 15 years now. Um, and what we've done is taken a lot of our legacy IP around agentless synthetic monitoring. So what you'll hear a lot about today is a very novel and uh, interesting technique in terms of implementing synthetic monitoring. So there is synthetic monitoring has been around for a, for a, for a while. Um, and the Selenium approach is, is very mature, um, but unfortunately Selenium doesn't work for, uh, for Citrix. It's really only kind of used for, um, for Chrome-based tests. So what we've done is we've developed a technique uh, to enable us to automate workflows in virtualized Citrix applications and uh, Citrix desktops. So although the product is new, the IP has been around for a number of years, uh, as has the development team. Uh, I'll just pass it over to Andy, and uh, who will give you the, the overview of Splunk. I'm sure you're all aware of the organization, but uh, as, as a courtesy, Andy, over to you. Sure. Thank you, Simon. So um, look, Splunk is really 
a machine data platform. And I guess it's a place where we can take data from many different silos, bring it together in one place, and then provide insights on that for various teams. So the teams, uh, the, the insights might be for people on the application support and application delivery side, or it might be from the owners of the business service, or it could be the security team. So we provide, I guess, different lenses uh, on the data, and it's really good for breaking down silos. And we can actually take that, uh, I, I guess, to the next level, which is around providing some machine learning. And that's really good for predicting when an incident might take place. And that early insight, say 30 minutes in advance, is critical for application support teams. And, and one of the things I love about the combination of Two Steps and Splunk is that one of the lead indicators is end user experience. And this has always been a blind spot for us uh, from the Citrix perspective. So this is a really valuable uh, combination of, of forces joining up. Wonderful. Thanks, Andy. So, OK, to set things up, up until now, um, synthetic monitoring for virtualized applications has been limited. Um, current solutions that we've seen in the marketplace tend to stop at either uh, the log on process uh, to Citrix or the launching of an application. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the problem with that is when we're thinking about end user experience, uh, we, we want to go past that. We want to understand what's happening when our, uh, our users um, are actually in the application themselves. So we'll look at an example or some examples of, uh, of, of end user experience actions um, in the next slide. But it's really important that we get visibility of how somebody is using the, the application and that's really been missing um, in the marketplace. Um, in today's webinar, we'll explain how two steps will unlock new ways to automate these workflows, or we call them user journeys within an application, how it's a quick and simple process with no coding, no embedded agents, no hooking into your APIs to get the automation running. And what we're going to do in terms of the presentation is break it down into two main headings. The first is stage one, which is how you can move to a more proactive posture um, by getting ahead of problems before there's a major customer impact. So that's all about um, implementing synthetic monitoring that simulates user behavior, creating baselines, benchmarks and SLAs that in turn form KPIs, and then accelerating root cause analysis by correlating end user experience data with uh, infrastructure data that's powering the business service. So that's stage one, and it's really about proactive. Um, stage two is how can we um, try and leverage this, this, this holy grail of being predictive? Is there a way that we can stop IT issues happening before they happen uh, and, and impact, the, uh, impact the users? So that's really about um, consolidating the performance data in, in Splunk, leveraging predictive algorithms or, or machine learning algorithms, and then understanding what's normal and what is not normal. Yeah. And from the Splunk side, uh, for us, this is a combination of using really Splunk as a big data platform for the IT operations data uh, and the end user experience data, and then putting some machine learning on top of that to predict 30 minutes out when incidents might take place. And Gartner actually describes that as AI ops the combination of big data and machine learning to provide uh, insights to the, to the support teams that they wouldn't otherwise have. Wonderful, thanks Andy. Okay, so end user experience um, is what we refer to as an output metric. It's tied to the business action a user is trying to perform when accessing an application. So, you know, uh, am I able to print? Uh, am I able to check out? Uh, how long does it take to, to run a database search, upload a file, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, the aim of end user experience monitoring is to understand the performance of these mission critical applications within our business uh, and when a user is trying to perform a business action. Additionally, it's critical to monitor what's happening at the infrastructure level or input metrics um, and these are the different infrastructure components that, that power a business service, such as a website, a CRM, or, or an ERP system. 
the the, the challenge is if you just have uh, either the input or the output on its own, um, then it can be limiting or misleading. So, so what I mean by that is if you have a piece of infrastructure data that is performing erroneously, the challenge is um, what is the impact? Um, is it a P1 incident? Are my users being affected? Do I need to wake up the building? So having the end user experience data along with the infrastructure data, you can start making those correlations and understand the priority of fixes. Mm -hmm. Conversely, if you're just looking at the output data, which is the end user experience data, and applications are performing slowly, then the challenge is, where do I begin to start my investigation? How do I fix the underlying cause? And of course, this becomes even more complex when we're working in a Citrix environment. So it's only when you start to correlate input data, i.e. infrastructure data and output data, uh, end user experience data, that you can start to get uh, a full a full picture. So before we get into the demo, what we're what we're going to try and do is just set this up as a uh, as a as a typical scenario that we see um, across a lot of the organisations that we talk to, um, and that's um, a, a remote site scenario. So. Um, you know, recent, recently we were, were talking to uh, a state government department in, in Australia that had uh, 20 remote sites and the challenge was that the support desk would, um, would get hit with complaints that the applications were running slow. Uh, so not only were they being reactive because they were waiting on the call to hit the help desk, when the call did come in, uh, it was incredibly difficult to, for them to understand uh, where the uh, where the underlying cause was. Was it was it was it uh, was it Citrix? Mm. Was it the application? Uh, was it infrastructure at one of the remote sites? Were all the sites being affected? Was it one? Was it a cluster? Um, and and this is this is a common problem. Uh, so we'll talk about how we can go about um, uh, helping it with that that scenario. So hopefully that kind of sounds familiar, and uh, and even more hopefully um, you'll be able to see how the solution may be able to help with that. Uh, the current challenges uh, with um, Citrix virtual applications. So so as I mentioned, current monitoring solutions stop at login or application launch, and this doesn't provide real-time intelligence of performance within the application. So this idea of we need to automate um, workflows or user journeys that our users are using within those applications. Without synthetic monitoring, then you're exposed. Uh, you're exposed because you're not going to get that early warning sign or that regular heartbeat of how the application is performing. You may not even have baselines or KPIs set up, uh, so you don't even know what uh, good performance looks like. And then the final challenge with the, the current suite of solutions that we see out in the marketplace is all of the performance metrics, even though they are application logon or application launch, are stored in a separate repository. So if you're trying to correlate that data with the infrastructure data that you've got in Splunk, then it just becomes even more complex and difficult. Yeah. And that's actually an interesting point about siloed. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that I personally see in big organisations is that the problem of silos, where we might have one team that's interested in the, the end user experience part, that's critical for them, and then we have completely separate other teams on the network side and on the firewall side who might be more often security oriented, but they have data as well that it's actually really valuable understanding the health of the service. And then there are the database teams and the application teams and the virtualization teams. These are all silos. And when it comes down to an incident, time for us is critical. And having all of these silos, not having all that information in one place is something that, that can be a real problem. So I, I think that, that hitting that siloed mark is a, is a really critical thing to do. Great segue onto the next slide, which is really around time. So at the top of the slide, uh, the top of the presentation, we were talking about reducing uh, cost and reducing risk and reducing effort. And here's the kind of the typical scenario without um, robust synthetic monitoring is that you'll have uh, an impacting fault at the bottom and then a series of events that will start to alert 
the uh, the operation of the control center uh, and then you have the uh, medium time to resolution uh, and there's a direct correlation between the more time it takes to fix the issue uh, the bigger the dollar impact is on our organization and a lot of the times you, you, there may be a fix to the issue but it's not a permanent fix so you'll see the same problem cropping up time and time again so what we're really trying to do is we're trying to gain time and by gaining time uh, we reduce the cost within our business um, so monitoring end user experience, uh, just to kind of summarize why it's important, well, it's a fantastic way to produce performance benchmarks uh, and SLA. So a great method of developing application performance baselines or KPIs, because you're always running the test from a known state in a controlled environment. Um, it's a regular heartbeat for application performance. So as soon as performance degrades, you will know. In other words, you are buying time. So it provokes action before the users were impacted. An excellent leading indicator of something not acting in a normal way. Uh, and a robust data set that feeds into an AI ops framework. And uh, um, again, we'll, we'll, we'll unpack this further in the presentation. So I'm going to hand it over to Andrew Newlands now, who will uh, walk you through the demo. Um, what we're going to see is uh, how we set up a synthetic test without any code, without any scripting, without any embedded agents. Um, so I'm just going to move on to the next slide. And Andrew, it's over to you. Thank you, Simon. So this, this is actual video footage of a synthetic test or transaction being recorded within two steps. Now, what you can see is that uh, we have the application or system under test displayed right here inside two steps, almost as if you're running the Citrix, uh, the Citrix uh, virtual desktop or a virtual app yourself. Um, and you can see to build a test, I just sort of click on, click on the icons or type in the text boxes. And two steps on the right there is building up a, a kind of a script uh, of what it thinks I want to do and testing each action as we go. Now, in reality, what's happening is two steps is acting as kind of a middleman. So the real application is running uh, on a headless Linux server, and its user interface is being displayed through two steps onto the front end. And whenever I click on a button, say, or type in a box, uh, two steps is looking at the screen using um, computer vision techniques and trying to figure out you know, what visual cues on the screen I'm reacting to. So you can see when I clicked on that text box there, uh, a box appeared. And uh, with crosshair in the middle, uh, the crosshair represents the actual point where I clicked, and the box represents what two steps has decided is a, a sufficient template to detect what I'm looking for. And I can give it a hint. So you, you would have seen there that I stretched the box out to grab a, a whole block of text. That's useful both in creating you know, more intuitive, bigger templates, and also in avoiding things like, uh, say, a banner ad on a web page that, you, that will change over time that you don't want to include in the script. Uh, now, what you can see here is that I've taken all the, the final finalized test and I'm adding checkpoints. So rather than looking at individual steps, I'm uh, grouping steps together into logical blocks, like you know, logging into a, a storefront or opening an app or ordering a functional test. Uh, when we save and replay the test uh, ad nauseum in, um, in, this, in the scheduled uh, operation, two steps will gather statistics, not just for the test as a whole, but also for each of these checkpoints. So we'll be able to track their performance and any failures over time as a time series of data. Uh, and this last step here is me uh, just scheduling the test to run every, every five minutes, which will lead us into the next slide, but we'll see uh, the resulting time series in this month. So as promised, this is a, a simple, a very simple visualization of those five checkpoints and, and how, how their performance varied over time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a standard Splunk visualization, so it's built on a, a regular query. Um, there's no proprietary data once, uh, the, the, our data model is very open, it's not proprietary. So once it's in Splunk, you can use the usual tools that you're used to, to cut, to chop it up and visualize it and combine you know, our data and your dashboards as per normal. Mm. I love this, this Andy from Splunk here, because um, we've had for the last few years, <clears throat> the ability to do synthetic monitoring, running these scripts, uh, hitting a web application, and that interacts with the, the document object model in the browser, and, and it, it, it drives on a synthetic basis. Um, web activities, 
But from the Splunk side, having insights into the Citrix user experience has always been a blind spot. And so I, I can see that this takes that very similar model, um, but it seems to apply this purely from driving the GUI perspective. So yeah, I, I think this is uh, this is a really valuable thing. So I, I get a, I get a question for you, Andrew. So when when these scripts are, are running, is this running from a single central location? That's or... a really good question, Andy. Uh, the answer is no, not necessarily. Uh, you can run multiple two steps um, test nodes in different locations. So if you have, let's say, a uh, an internet facing application, you might want to test it once from inside your office and simultaneously from outside your data center over the internet. And you can do that. You can schedule a test to run simultaneously from multiple locations and thereby control for you know uh, different networks involved. Mm -hmm. So you can connect over a mobile network, over the internet, over your, your LAN or GWAN or WAN and, and see how those networks, have, for example, affect the test. So absolutely, yes, you can run from multiple locations. Very good. All right. And uh, Andrew, I have one from my end. So, uh, so I, I, when I when I was seeing the demo, I could see uh, uh, it, it. It looked a uh, lit. It looked like they uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the administrators had to kind of rec uh, as as in when the uh, uh, tests are being recorded, they had to enter some kind of code or. Uh, at, at different checkpoints, they had to enter a few things. So, uh, so uh, do these uh -huh. uh, admins who is managing uh, need any kind of uh, coding uh, background, or do they need any kind of training to to get this all going? Ah, thanks, Anil. N no, not really. Uh, what you were seeing was not coding. That was naming the 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 the, the, the steps, the images, the templates. So you can just click your way through it, and and it will work. But it will use generic names like you know step one, image one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas to make the test more readable, when I come back to it, I like to name you know this. But this is me clicking on the login button. Um, to actually learn to use two steps is not much harder than using the app. It's the application under test. In fact, probably it's more valuable that the person doing the, the, the test building be an application expert or subject matter expert for the application or the workflow rather than a technical person. Uh, training someone on two steps is easy, whereas learning the, the ins and outs of an application or a business workflow is often a lot harder. Great. Th thank you for that, uh, Andrew. My pleasure. Uh, this last slide in the demo is another um, one of our dashboards from Splunk, and it's a feature we're quite proud of, is the ability to uh, watch a video replay of a test uh, right there inside Splunk, um, with, with indeed an overlay on the right showing you how all the checkpoints, uh, ticking off the checkpoints as they're passed. Uh, this is a really great communication tool because as Simon alluded to earlier, often when something breaks, it's very hard to get a, a concise description of what is broken or um, and sometimes Chinese whispers at work and come into play. So, but someone will phone the help desk and complain about something, and that will get translated into maybe another issue that sounds the same but isn't. And that will come to the technical team, and they'll be like, you know, what does this really mean? We don't understand. Whereas with two steps, when something breaks, you have a video recording of it breaking, mm. and you you can copy that link or copy that video and pass it around and say, you know, this is the problem. This is what we need to fix. Right. And that really crystallizes communications. Mm. Mm. Right. Right, I, I think that's that's something which is uh, very helpful, and uh, and 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 it always helps uh, for somebody who's troubleshooting mm -hmm. to have the recording because you may uh, not get the uh, end user to uh, reproduce the issue. So uh, that definitely helps. Yes, I mean th this is a feature that's driven in a large part by my own professional experience working for a a large financial institution where we used to find that uh, it was very, very hard to get a, a good description of a problem. And a large part of that uh, mean time to resolution was actually built up of um, uh, divining exactly what was broken so we could start fixing it. And this is meant to eliminate that phase as much as possible. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so again, this kind of concept of um, of clawing back time, um, which is going to uh, to save the business money. Um, so the benefits of uh, two steps plus Blanc for Citrix, flexibility, ease and the integration. So um, I, I think the feedback that we have had um, is that uh, there, there isn't anything like this in, in the marketplace in terms of two steps, uh, power 
in relation to automation of workflows within a Citrix environment. As Andy from Splunk mentioned earlier, um, it's reasonably easy to do this with Selenium um, for web applications, but anything outside of that has been uh, challenging up until now. So it has unparalleled flexibility in terms of the application uh, that it can monitor or the platforms it can monitor. Now today we're talking about um, we're talking about Citrix virtualized applications, but um, Two Steps also has the ability to um, implement synthetic monitoring across iOS, Android, Windows, so Internet Explorer, um, you kind of those legacy CRMs that you see, um, such as Siebel. Um, uh, also, things like two-factor authentication um, are, are frameworks that we can work with. So, incredible flexibility, um, ease of use. So. Um, Andrew touched on this. Um, you do not need an expensive development resource to set up uh, the tests. In fact, we recommend that um, you, you, you have a business stakeholder that understands the application that you want to monitor uh, to set up the tests. And, and, it, and it really is quite, quite easy to do. Um, I am not a developer, um, and I, uh, I set up all my tests when uh, I'm going to, uh, to talk to prospects. So if I can do it, anybody can. And then the, the third uh, component is this idea of everything being integrated and the consolidation of data. So what that is, uh, what that is providing in terms of benefit is the ability to make correlations between uh, the infrastructure components that are powering the business service and the end user experience of the application. What that means in terms of uh, our uh, time diagram uh, is that through two steps and Splunk alerts, uh, we're now getting ahead of the curve. We now have a regular heartbeat uh, we have set up benchmarks and baseline KPIs of what good performance looks like. And as soon as that deviates, as soon as that slows down to, um, to a state that we're unhappy with or it breaks completely, uh, then we're going to know immediately. And that gives us an opportunity to get in front of it before the majority of our users are impacted. Okay, so we're going to move on to stage two now, which is really this idea of um, predictive. So is it possible for me to even predict IT issues before they happen? Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Andy from Splunk that's going to give, um, give you a bit of an overview of uh, the way Splunk see uh, machine learning uh, and AI ops. Andy, over to you. Sure, thanks, Sam. Yeah, look, it's a really interesting thing when we've got people talking about AI ops. And as we mentioned earlier, the way that Gartner describes AI ops uh, is that it's taking IT operations data, putting that into a big data platform, and then applying machine learning on top to look at patterns to make life easier for IT operations teams. Really, the aim is to actually prevent incidents from happening in the first place. So I think big data and then machine learning. So Splunk, natively naturally is a big data platform and when we apply machine learning on top of that um, we can do some amazing things and when we look at machine learning there are three main categories that come into play so the first category of machine learning is around anomaly detection and anomaly detection really tells us is the application the infrastructure the experience is it behaving normally or not is it, is it normal or not? And understanding when something is not normal, um, that gives us the ability to, to jump in uh, and see the very, very start of an issue. So, so jump in and remediate it before it actually impacts our customers. So that's anomaly detection. That's normal versus not normal. And then the next stage from there is to be able to predict the health of a service. And a service might be a combination of both technical end user experience and business KPIs, key performance indicators. And looking at the, the pattern of behavior and predicting the future health uh, is a really valuable thing to do. And we've found in Splunk, our sweet spot is predicting the health of a service about 30 minutes in advance. But the, 
I guess we need some key ingredients to go into that predictive model. And one of those key ingredients is the end user experience, because that's a lead indicator. It's a really good way, it's a, it's a good metric that helps us to understand what the future, the future behavior might be like. And predictive analytics is really good for issues that tend to repeat themselves. And it's surprising in our experience, a lot of uh, incidents tend to be from a root cause that just happens again and again. And these are typically ones that are just diabolically hard to actually troubleshoot and reproduce. So being able to predict an incident based on what we're seeing right now is a really valuable thing for IT operations teams. The third amount, the third, I guess, category of machine learning is around clustering. And this is where we use our machine learning algorithms to look at uh, tens or hundreds or thousands of events and alerts and alarms are taking place and we can cluster these together. So we can say, well, we might have had a thousand alerts, but actually it's related to one single episode, which might have a timeline. And doing the clustering is a really great way of reducing the amount of distraction that the operation and support teams have, so they can see a very, very clear signal of what's going on through what can otherwise be a very noisy environment. So those are the three categories of machine learning that we apply on top of our big data platform, really to provide AI ops capabilities uh, to our customers. So with this next part, I'll show you what it looks like once we take the user experience from Citrix via two steps and when we put that into Splunk, um, we'll show you how we can apply some machine learning to, uh, to help customers predict uh, and, and react very, very quickly to incidents. And the, the module that I'm going to show you in Splunk is called IT Service Intelligence. Or a lot of our customers affectionately refer to it as ITSI or ITSI. Uh, but that's really, you can think of this as being, I guess, a, an easy button for machine learning for your IT operations data. So, uh, welcome to ITSI. So this is a view of Splunk and we are looking at the health of a service. And so you can see in this case, the service is, is really the remote end user experience for our, our New York office. And if you look at that tree diagram, this is where in Splunk we are visualizing the dependencies of the service and how they can affect each other. So we can see right now that the health, the color of our service is orange right now. And the question is, well, well, that's interesting, but why is it gone orange? Because orange uh, indicates that we need to apply some attention because something's going wrong. I can look at the dependencies and I see uh, there are some key dependencies for our local area network, our virtual desktop delivery and the virtual app delivery. And it's interesting, if I look down the tree, I can see that the, the virtual desktop and virtual app delivery, they both rely on the authorization service. And that's interesting because I can see that the authorization service is having an issue. And what does the authorization service rely on? Well, it relies on Active Directory and IIS. IIS is actually behaving really well at the moment, so I can remove that as a, as a possibility for things that are going wrong. And this really brings my attention down to the bottom left-hand corner, down to the Active directory technical service. This is really interesting for us. And there are a number of key performance indicators that, that tell me the health of Active Directory right now. And I can look at the metrics on the right-hand side of the screen and I can see that the storefront response time mm, is really having a challenge at the moment. And I can see very, very recently it's spiked up. So this very quickly from a visual perspective allows me to look at the overall service and really be able to understand what key component might be causing the root cause. So you can imagine if you're on the support desk and you're looking at a large number of services, it's a really great way to be able to, to very quickly to drill down uh, to work out what the root cause might be. And then we can escalate it to the appropriate team. So the question is, if the, the response time has recently spiked, well, what was the timeline? When did the issue actually start? And that takes me into 
the drill down where I can look at the timelines. And for me, the timelines are really valuable because then we can work out, well, when did the system start to become not normal? And what, what went wrong first? Because often in, when you're in the middle of an incident, everything can be looking like it's going wrong. But understanding the thing that went wrong first is really critical. So I can see that the, the service health score, we score on a scale of zero to 100. So it was pretty steady for quite a few hours and then it started to, to decrease until we went from a status of green, which was normal, to yellow, which is not normal. And if I look underneath that, that overall service, I can see in this case, the, the storefront logon and, and a lot of other people call it, I guess the Citrix workspace logon. So I can see that this was pretty good for a while and then it, it ramped up massively. So it went from green to orange to red in a pretty short amount of time. But that storefront logon, remember that relies on the authentication service and the authentication service started to, to exhibit uh, an issue much earlier on. So it's about three, for about three hours, we were having issues with the authentication response. We could see it went from green to yellow. So not, not orange or red, but yellow is really valuable because that tells us when something is not normal. Remember the machine learning behind the scenes says this is not normal for this time of day. And if I drill down even further, I can see, well, why did the authentication response slow down? Well, it looks like the disk IO, the read ops, uh, on that service started to, to show patterns of being not normal much earlier. And so you can see here, this gives us a visual timeline to be able to just drill down and understand what went wrong first. And the, the amazing thing here is that we're looking at the metrics. However, uh, our support teams, they require some real evidence. They really wanna know well, what was happening on the actual server behind the scenes. And because this is Splunk, we can provide data from many different sources. So we've got those metrics, but we also have a direct view here of the alerts and alarms that are happening on the storefront uh, server. And so this actually shows us what was going on in the logs. And this is a really a unique view of, of looking at both a combination of metrics and logs and alerts all in a single place. So this is a really valuable way to work out well, what went wrong first. Uh, and then so we can we can jump in and address that. Now, remember we talked about different types of machine learning. So understanding if something is normal or not normal is, is one category of machine learning. But the other thing we can do in Splunk is provide a, a predictive view on the health of the service. And as I said earlier, I think 30 minutes in our experience is our sweet spot where we can look at the service and predict based on what we're seeing, the machine learning says, well, that's interesting. Based on what's happening right now, we predict that the health of the service will be X. And in this case, we can see that right now we've got a, we might have a, a high score for our service, say 95 to 100, but we're predicting in the next 30 minutes, it's gonna drop down to 50, which is a significant drop. And the thing about prediction is that you need to be able to explain why we predict that it's going to drop. What are the root causes? And in this case, Splunk is telling us that the storefront logon time is one of those key metrics. And if we're seeing that dip, we predict based on what we've seen before, that the health, that the health of the service is going to dip. So the key KPIs here are the end user experience, the sessions disconnected, the Active Directory CPU utilization and the disk IO read performance. So those, Splunk is telling us that those are the key indicators that's telling us that we're going to have a problem 30 minutes from now. And, and 30 minutes in the context of dealing with an incident, it's just magic to have that time back up your sleeve. And I think it's kind of fair to say that the, the end mm. user experience um, KPI that's being produced by two steps is reasonably valuable in, in this view. Oh, it's exceptionally valuable. Like end user experience is one of these, these magic lead indicators that's really important for us. Um, for, for predicting when we're going to have issues that, that will actually affect customers. Okay, so what happens when we get that, uh, that predictive analysis, that machine learning that's running? So when that predicts that we're going to have an issue 30 minutes in advance, that can give us an alert and we might feed that alert into uh, our incident management system. So we might use this, for instance, to create a ticket in 
upstairs now. Remedy are both good examples of that. And this provides us the ability to just have a head start and get in front of the issue before it takes place. So you can see down the bottom of the screen, uh, we've got a, a critical episode uh, that we've highlighted that, that might be happening in 30 minutes time. And so this is a great way of using machine learning to help the IT teams get in front of issues and the end user experience from Citrix by two steps is a, is a critical ingredient in all that process. Right, and and I can tell you uh, from my personal experience that uh, uh, if, if the issue uh, is is on the act authentication servers or on the Active Directory, the impact is huge. Mm. Uh, and and, uh, and and Citrix being uh, uh, used uh, used by a lot of enterprises to uh, uh, to to enable remote access and and have their critical applications and desktops. Uh, this this really stops uh, stops uh, users from logging in, causing uh, huge downtimes and and impacting uh, business. So so having this uh, predict prediction uh, 30 minutes earlier for for um, for the uh, IT uh, administrators, the Citrix administrators, and everybody would really help uh, to to proactively uh, remediate this issue. I, I think this is something which. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, the uh, uh, admins who have joined here today would, would really love and, and uh, uh, would like to uh, know more about her. Thanks, Anil. Yeah, yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. So um, back to the timeline. Um, the orange line in the middle was really that proactive um, concept. So getting uh, ahead of the events that impact all your users by having that regular heartbeat uh, through two steps and Splunk alerts. But now we're looking at the green line, which is two steps and Splunk machine learning through ITSI. Uh, and the claim is that there's no, um, no time to resolution because we're getting on top of the issue before there is, before there is an issue, before there is, before there is an, an impact. I think one of the things to call out is um, if, if you are on the webinar uh, and you don't have uh, ITSI, then you know that that that's okay because there is still the stage one mm. of being proactive and gaining time, uh, and our counsel would be that's where you start mm. uh, implementing synthetic monitoring. Uh, on user workflows within your Citrix virtual applications is going to have significant benefit and you're going to gain time, uh, you're going to reduce risk and cost and effort. And once you've cracked that, uh, then, then it's moving to this predictive state and that's where uh, ITSI can, can help. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this home. We spoke about um, we spoke about the uh, excuse me, my battery is just running a little bit low. Okay, yeah, we spoke about um, this this idea of um, reducing costs, reducing effort, reducing risk. And what have we spoke about? Well, let's talk about saving time. It's quicker to build tests it's faster to get to the root cause of the problem. Simplifying, there's no code, there's no agents. Um, it's the same method of setting up synthetic monitoring tests across all platforms. In regards to organization and integration, all of your end user experience, data and metrics fed directly into Splunk your source of truth, your single pane of glass. In regards of uh, connecting, well, we're connecting all of your remote sites data into one single repository. Um, and in regards to informing, we're producing an empirical data set that informs you of what is happening from an end user experience perspective. And this is critical when you're moving to a predictive AI ops framework. When you put all of that together, what does it mean for the business? Well, it means that you're reducing risk because there's less exposure to customer experience issues. You're reducing effort because you now have a framework of implementing tests, which is way easier. Uh, and you're reducing costs because you're uh, reducing the impact of IT issues. 
Uh, and that uh, concludes the presentation. Um, if anybody on the webinar is interested in, in learning more, um, then here is my contact details. Um, please, please drop me uh, drop me an email. We would be delighted to jump on a call uh, and unpack this capability further. Talk about some of the use cases that we've come across uh, and how it can help your business. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it back to Anil, and hopefully we've got some some questions that the uh, the presentation has provoked. Right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for the presentation, uh, Simon, Andrew, and Andy. Uh, and and uh, and we have. I've been monitoring the uh, questions uh, panel, uh, and we've got quite quite a few questions from the audience. So let me uh, uh, pick pick a few from here. Uh, so so the very uh, first question is. Uh, could you monitor uh, VDIs or Citrix virtual desktops? Uh, as well, uh, because I, I think the question came because we uh, showed how uh, how it, how two steps uh, could build test cases on virtual apps, but could we do the same with virtual desktops as well? Right. I'm going to let Andrew. Yeah, I'm going to let Andrew take the, uh, the the questions. Yeah, the the answer is absolutely. We can do virtual desktops as well. Uh, in fact, two steps can monitor any app, any system or application whereby you can get the the screen fed into it. It can consume uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops, VNC, uh, Windows RDP, uh, or in any uh, Linux x11 program, as well as iOS and Android. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to adapt other systems to fit in there as well. Uh, but yes, straight out of the box, we can do both, both forms of Citrix uh, application and virtual desktop. Right, and 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 does it does it matter if uh, if, if Citrix is hosted on uh, on on premises or uh, uh, or they are hybrid using using some of the public some of the resources on the public cloud? Uh, does it really matter where the uh, Citrix infrastructure is uh, deployed? Not even slightly. Uh, uh, two, two steps itself is simply swallowing up the Citrix um, workspace client. So as long as the workspace client can connect to the infrastructure, it will work uh, out of the box. Two steps itself not, it has no idea where the back end, where, where your Citrix tests are physically running. <laughs> right. Um, so so by workspace client, uh, you you mean the Citrix uh, a workspace app or the receiver which uh, which gets installed on uh, all the, all the uh, uh, end user machines to launch Citrix. Exactly that. Yes. Right. All right, and and uh, so so uh, Andy, when you were uh, showing the demo, I could see uh, uh, you were uh, you were clicking on uh, on each of the steps, uh, how an end user would launch the application, and uh, at at each step you could uh, kind of record and and also highlight uh, the key uh, uh, key pointers there. Uh, but but I could also see a Splunk uh, dashboard in the in the background. So. Uh, so for yes. uh, for somebody who wants to uh, use two steps, how do they get started? Uh, is is it an app within Splunk? Uh, if, if you could uh, provide some background on the technical requirements. Yes, absolutely. As you've astutely observed, uh, the front end is a Splunk app, which is on Splunk base. Uh, the back end runs on a Linux, a commodity Linux server, so it can be virtualized to be on the cloud or be physical. Uh, we recommend a, a Red Hat or CentOS uh, machine on which you'll install a couple of standard Linux packages. Um, there's some very lightweight configuration, um, but apart from that, it's really just a matter of putting the packages onto a Linux box, uh, pointing to your Citrix server, um, install the app into Splunk, and off you go. Right. So, 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 so not, uh, not a lot of time uh, to kind of get started, so, so that's always good. Um, and uh, I think I see uh, see one more uh, redundant redundant question uh, where mm -hmm. where they are asking, does it matter if uh, virtual apps and desktops are implemented in uh, in, in an FS logics uh, environment? No, indeed, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so one more very uh, some something. Uh, 
related to building uh, the test steps, I think. Uh, so one of the uh, questions is, does it use PowerShell scripts to run uh, the synthetic query? No, it doesn't. Uh, what it's doing is uh, on our backend server, it fires up a, a copy of as the Citrix workspace uh, application in, in a little container and it, it simulates keyboard and mouse input to going into the, the workspace application. So it literally moves the mouse pointer and clicks the button as far as um, Citrix is concerned. Um, it, right. it, it's actually running on Linux at the back end. Um, it's a custom uh, .NET Core assembly at a very technical level, but there's no PowerShell involved. Great, and and I and I remember uh, uh, initially when uh, uh, when Simon and you presented uh, the demo uh, to, during the Citrix City validation. You you, you also did mention uh, after uh, after the steps have been recorded, you could also simulate uh, simulate the test uh, based on the number of users uh, who uh, who use the uh, application. So maybe uh, at the start of the day. Uh, 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 50 to 100 users access the application at the same time. So you could really uh, simulate that within uh, two steps and load the data into Splunk to see uh, uh, but, uh, to see if there's any problem which which comes up. So, so that was something which was very cool. Yeah, there, there are a number of other modules for two steps which we didn't show you here. Uh, one of them, as you alluded to, is, is the bulk test module, which lets you um, spin up a hundred or a thousand individual users and have them run through a, a, the same job or a similar job in parallel uh, to beat in the system and, and verify load. Uh, obviously that's not something you do every five minutes um, uh, for a monitoring job, but it's good for testing you know, other, other, other aspects of the system. Uh, there are a few other modules, for example, there's one to do uh, two-factor authentication versus an external SMS provider, for example, which obviously we didn't have time to go through here. Um, that's not directly relevant to this, this sort of application. Um, but the core product is what you see, the, the automation piece, and it can be delivered in various ways. So running tests every five minutes to monitor something, or as you said, fire off a, a thousand users at once to test capacity. All right. Uh, and uh, Andy, uh, uh, a question to you. I, th I think uh, the uh, Etsy model and, and the uh, uh, ability to uh, identify or predict uh, predict a problem in the environment uh, 30 minutes uh, or so earlier is, is something very uh, helpful uh, to uh, to Citrix and and Citrix for sure. But uh, but does it? Uh, uh, I, I've personally had the uh, opportunity to learn a little bit about Splunk during one of the trainings and. Uh, th th that that was something uh, which which I did not know that you could load any any kind of logs data from your entire infrastructure and could uh, uh, come out with very uh, uh, a very uh, intuitive results. So so uh, so if if you could brief brief us more on uh, some of uh, the other use cases which our audience uh, which which will help our audience, it would be helpful. Uh, sure. So I guess from a Splunk perspective, one of the things that I really love is the fact that we can take data from many different data sources and, and have it in a single place and break down those silos. So for instance, um, for application teams, often they have blind spots to do with firewalls and the, 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 the network environment. And the networking teams, they have a blind spot in terms of if they make a change, what impact it has on the application teams. And then there are right. the infrastructure and the, uh, the Citrix teams and everyone historically operates in their own bubble. And so being able to bring all that data into one place and break down those silos so that you can look at the with your, your area of expertise, you can look at the impact that you're having on the business. And when you understand the impact that other teams are having on you, that's, that's a, a really powerful thing to help reduce that time to restore a service. And so having that visibility across silos is one of the, <clears throat> is one of the key things that people look for when they're implementing Splunk. And what we often recommend is pick a, a critical business service that relies on Citrix, but it has a, a, a number of moving parts to it. 
and pick a, a business service that has a, a problem it's worth solving. And then once people start on that journey, they can splunk that service uh, and get some very quick results uh, and then use that to expand out into the rest of the organisation. And that's a typical journey that we see a lot of our Splunk community going down. Right. Uh, th thanks so much for that, Andy. And uh, and, and that, that that's about the time we had uh, for questions for today. I think uh, we've uh, run out of time, but uh, we, we have more questions which have come in, but, but we'll definitely uh, reach, uh, reach out to uh, every one of you over the email. And uh, I also see uh, some of the attendees, uh, attendees asking if uh, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, to answer that, yes, uh, we will be sharing the uh, recording uh, with all the registered uh, uh, registered uh, uh, registrants to their email addresses shortly. And uh, with that said, uh, we are about to end today's webinar. Uh, I want to uh, take a moment to thank all our speakers uh, for making this fantastic presentation and sharing uh, great uh, insights with us. Thanks, uh, Simon, Andrew, and Andy. And uh, last but not the least, I want to thank uh, everyone who, uh, uh, who were able to attend today's webinar. Uh, and uh, this shall conclude our broadcast for today. Thank you. Thanks, Anil. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.